Now, Babesia is probably the most common co-infection that I'm finding in my patients. And it's the one that is keeping many of the European patients who come to see me and many of the American patients sick. Now, when would you suspect a patient has babesiosis? Well, if they come in with the classical symptoms of Lyme, they have good and bad days, the symptoms come and go, the joint and muscle pain and nerve pain migrates around the body, it gets better and worse with antibiotics, it's changed by hormones, but they say to you, I have day sweats, I have night sweats, I have chills, I have an air hunger, a dyspnea, where I can't explain why I can't catch my breath. I have a cough that I can't explain. They don't have allergic rhinitis. They don't have asthma or COPD. They don't have GERD and reflux, which accounts for 99% of our coughs. That is a classical presentation for babesiosis, especially in a patient that is three times sicker and has not gotten better with Lyme treatment. What Babesia does is it makes all of the Lyme symptoms worse. Whether it's your fatigue, your joint pain, your muscle pain, your nerve pain, your memory and concentration problems. We have had resistant patients being treated for Lyme that once they were treated for Babesia, they got better. There was one patient in France who just came to me. She was sick for 13 years, being unable to be helped by French physicians. We discovered Babesia Wa-1 Duncani. I gave her Mepron, Atovaquone, with azithromycin, with Septra, Bactrim Double Strength. And within one month, she said to me, I feel incredibly better. I can now get out of bed. My muscle and joints don't hurt. I have better energy than I've had in the last 13 years. And it was not picked up because they were not testing in France and in many parts of Europe for these different strains of Babesia. So you can get Babesia WA1, Babesia duncani, and Babesia divergens, all of these different Babesia species. But the problem like Lyme, where there's 100 different strains of uh, Lyme in the United States and 300 worldwide, there are over 100 different types of Babesia called pyroplasmosis. And we're not going to pick up all of these different strains of Babesia, so what you need to do is a Babesia panel. The Guillem's disdain that most doctors were taught to treat and to test for Babesia will only pick up Babesia if the level of parasitemia is greater than 5% in the blood. You will not pick it up otherwise on a Guillem's disdain. We have to use a panel approach of an immunofluorescent assay, a fluorescent in C2 hybridization, a fish test, the RNA probe that Dr. Shaw talked to you about, and a PCR test. And we will find that an IFA can be negative, but a PCR can be positive. Or an IFA and a PCR can be negative, but a fish can be positive. So if you have a patient with these malaria-type symptoms and they're not getting better, and you've ruled out by differential diagnosis the other cause of drenching sweats. They don't have hyperthyroidism. They don't have tuberculosis, non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, hormonal failure. I'm going to discuss differential diagnosis more in detail tomorrow. You must suspect Babesia in these patients, and you should give them a trial of anti-malarial medication. It makes a huge difference in getting many of these patients better.